Okay, so welcome back to another video. So here's a closed form that we would like to solve for, and that is for n strictly greater than 1. So really, we're going through the natural number systems and then excluding the element 1. Find a closed form for p sub n is equal to the product series, such that p are only inclusive for prime numbers of p sub n plus 1 divided by p sub n minus 1. So in the past, I actually did a video of that same formulation, except this is for the n equals 2 case. So if you want to check that out, the link is in the description below. Solving all that out, that we're actually going to get that as equal to 5 over 2. And of course, in the end, once we solve for that, clo that close form, we would like to check for the validity of plugging in that case into it to see if we get the same thing, such that that close form does work for, you know, for all the natural numbers except for 1. So really, this video is going to be a short one. It's the same thing, just like the other one as well for that n equals 2 case. But for finding that closed form, usually we're just actually going to use the Riemann zeta function representation in forms of the Euler products. Euler products being the prime, well, not really the prime, but the product representation of a Dirichlet series in terms for the index of the prime numbers. So using that utilization, then we're just going to rewrite some stuff and then it's all um it, it, it's just going to close from there. So nothing with that, let's just jump right in. So let's first write the definition for the Riemann zeta function. So that means I'll say Riemann zeta of s. So I'll just put this as first, write that as the infinite sum. So that's not going to really use anything, but just for in terms of the definition, it's just helpful to put there. So that's n is equal to 1 of 1 divided by n, divide, n to the power s. It's written as the following product, Euler product, as the product series. So p is prime. And then that's equal to or of 1 divided by 1 subtract p to the power negative s. And if you actually want to simplify this a little further yourself, we can say that that's the same thing. So p is prime of p to the power s and then divided by p to the power s subtract 1. And so here's a note that we're just going to put down that we're actually going to substitute later for, you know, rewriting this. So p to the power 2n and then subtract 1. In other words, that's really the same thing as, if, you know, the difference of squares. So p to the power n plus 1 and then top, multiply with p to the power n subtract 1. Then if I just divide p to the n, um, subtract 1 to both sides. So that means I have that p to the power n plus 1 is equal to p to the power 2n subtract 1 divided by p to the power n minus 1. And so with this, that's actually going to be the substitution we're going to be placing over here. So now going forward, so p sub n, in other words, that I'm just going to, you know, rewrite the same thing again. So now applying that substitution, so the infinite product, so for prime numbers specifically of the index, so this is going to be p to the power 2n subtract 1, then divided by p to the power n subtract 1, all that being divided by p to the power n minus 1. Okay, and so continuing forward that, you know, with, when it comes to the, the division, I can actually put that on the bottom. So that means this is going to be a quantity square on the denominator. So p prime and then p to the power 2n minus 1 and then divided by p to the power n and then minus 1 quantity square. Okay, now next thing I'll do is I'll actually just multiply and divide a p to the power 2n. So that means over here that it means um, p to the prime, p is prime. And so I have p to the power 2n minus 1. So I'm actually going to split this so p to the power 2n on its own, then multiply so p to the power 2n on the top, and then p to the power n and subtract 1. So that's actually going to be quantity square. And so using with the continuity of, you know, product series, so now I can write this as a product of prime, um, a product of product series, that's the weird way to say that. So now I have, so the product P prime, then P to the power 2N minus one, or that, not on the exponent, it's supposed to be outside of that. Subtract one divided by P to the power um, 2N, multiplied by the infinite product index for the primes, and so this is going to be p to the power 2n, then divided by p to the power n, subtract 1, and then quantity square. And then utilizing the definition from the Riemann zeta function of Euler's products over here for the prime index, what we can write this as is the same thing of, if you put in the correct inputs, this is the same thing as the 1 divided by the Riemann zeta of 2n, and then multiply with the Riemann zeta square of n. And so therefore, the closed form for our little... Um, representation for p sub n is written as Riemann zeta square of n divided by 
the Relon Zeta of 2N. And so therefore that is actually our final product. Well, well rather, this is our final answer of the close expression form for what piece of N is for the natural number strictly N is greater than one. Okay, so with that out of the way, as mentioned, let's actually plug in the N equals two case from the video I mentioned. So for the N equals two case, then that means that if I just plug this in, so that means Riemann zeta square of two, and then divided by Riemann zeta of four. So Riemann zeta of four is actually gonna equal pi to the power of four divided by 90. I actually did a proof. If you wanna see that, that link will also be in the description below as well. And then we know on the top that Riemann zeta two is actually just Basel's function, pi squared divided by six. So if I square that again, so that means I have pi to the power of four divided by 36. All this being divided by pi to the power of four divided by 90. Then we actually just fix this up, reduce that the pi over fours will cancel each other. So I have 90 divided by 36, which indeed reduces down to just five divided by two, which is indeed one of the answers. Well, the only answer from the pi squared minus one divided by, or pi squared plus one divided by pi squared minus one from that case that we did from the past video. So just like that, that 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 valid that validates that for the n equals two case, and therefore that is our closed form expression, just like that. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.